Good morning children. Sai Ram. Um, today I am going to start with the second lesson of geography. Uh, hope uh, you all have uh, finished the first lesson already and uh, you have sent me the worksheets. Right. So now uh, we are just going to uh, start the new lesson. Uh, the name of the lesson is globe latitudes and longitudes. So globe latitudes and longitudes. So we are going to see about the latitudes and longitudes. How a globe will be right. So that is what we are going to see. So you would have observed uh, the globe in school right. I have uh, already shown you. Uh, in that you will have uh, two ends. Uh, one on top and one at the bottom. So it is called as the poles and uh, you will have uh, it will be connected by a line right so that is called as an axis so what is an axis uh, the imaginary line that joins the poles right and now we are going to see what is an axis and then equator what is an equator okay Axis is the imaginary straight line passing through the North Pole, the center of the Earth and the South Pole at an angle of 23.5 degrees Celsius. So you would have seen the globe, it is like tilted, right? So axis is nothing but the imaginary straight line passing through, North Pole will be the top, South Pole will be at the bottom and it will pass through the center of the Earth earth okay axis is the imaginary straight line passing through the north pole the center of the earth and the south pole at an angle of 23.5 degrees right axis is the imaginary line pa imaginary straight line passing through the north pole the center of the earth and the south pole at an angle of 23.5 degrees okay so that is an axis okay next so we are going to see uh, what is an equator so before that what are latitudes so the title of the lesson is like uh, latitudes and longitudes right so first what are latitudes Latitudes are nothing but the imaginary horizontal line on the earth. So horizontal and vertical you all know the difference right. So the horizontal lines on earth. Imaginary horizontal lines on the earth are called latitudes right. Imaginary horizontal lines on the earth. Okay that is called as a latitude. And equator, what is an equator? Equator divides the earth in north and south. So when you see the globe, on top you will have the north pole and down you will have the south pole. In between it will divide, a line will divide the globe. So that dotted lines are called the equator. So equator divides the earth into north and south. Right? So what are latitudes? Imaginary horizontal lines on the earth are called latitudes and the equator divides the earth into north and south. Okay. And axis is the imaginary line from north pole to the center of the earth and to the south pole. It connects all the three. Okay. Imaginary straight line is called as the axis. Okay. So we saw latitudes or horizontal lines on the earth surface. So when you see the globe, uh, you can see the horizontal lines. No, those things are called latitudes. Okay. Now next. So you can see this picture there. You can see the north pole on top. And uh, down you have a dotted lines there. That is called as the equator. That is called as the equator. And uh, bottom part, it is called as the south pole okay so equator is at the zero degree so the where the equator line is there no that is the zero degree okay that is called as the zero degree and north pole is 90 degree to the north 
so straight 90 degree means it will be straight right so 90 degree to the north is the north pole and similarly downwards at 90 degree to the south is the south pole so equator is at 0 degrees north pole is at 90 degree north and south pole is at 90 degree south okay okay so we saw about what is an axis what is an equator uh, then we saw what are latitudes right latitudes are horizontal lines and we saw uh, equator will be at the zero degree north pole will be at 90 degree north and south pole will be 90 degree south okay so the next we saw what are latitudes now what are longitudes longitudes are imaginary vertical lines uh, which like longitude we call it as longitudes or meridians so imaginary vertical lines are called longitudes or meridians okay imaginary vertical lines are called longitudes or meridians so when you have the earth right so uh, the earth will be like um, uh, you can see uh, how the earth will be uh, using a globe so there will be uh, the globe will be of different sizes right it will be big it will be small uh, but as uh, we learnt in the last lesson uh, the earth is not um, uh, it is like sphere it is not uh, it is flattened at the poles right so how will you uh, find a particular location so if you want uh, to tell your friend this is a particular location if you want to tell how will you uh, say that so you can use it using the uh, position of the of any location using the uh, latitudes and longitudes so the longitudes no, they help us in explaining the position of any location on the earth so the latitudes and longitudes no they help in explaining the position of any location on the earth so if you want to explain if you know the latitude and longitude of the particular place you can Sure, you can explain to uh, anyone uh, like this is the location like that with the help of latitude and longitude we can just locate the position any position on the any point on the earth okay this is the help of latitudes and longitudes next we have uh, equator we said we said there is a meridian prime meridian we saw that no, it is the important one. Uh, we have different meri uh, meridians, but prime meridian divides the earth in east and west. So, equator divides north and south. So, prime meridian divides east and west. Okay. Prime meridian divides the earth in east and west. So, it is dividing it. So, prime meridian passes through London. So, uh, when you see that uh, globe, no, London, no, it will divide, um, on, uh, London, it will pass through London, okay. Prime meridian divides the earth in east and west, okay. So, prime meridian is 0 degree. As equator is in 0 degree, prime meridian is also at 0 degree, okay. So, unlike equator, prime meridian is drawn only across half of the globe passing through greenwich london so equator no we will be drawing fully but prime meridian is drawn only across half of the globe uh, passing through greenwich london so it will be passing through london that greenwich the particular place it will pass only half of the globe will be divided not the full equator if you see um, so it will be fully uh, drawn okay but this will not be drawn prime meridian will be half of the globe only we will draw okay then so we have uh, seen about um, axis equator latitudes longitudes and then prime meridians right so we have seen all these things now uh, importance of parallel latitudes so we have something called as parallel latitudes okay 
so here uh, you can see this picture uh, when you download your ncrt textbook it is from the book only so just um, these are the important parallel latitudes here so you can see north pole south pole and then you have equator right so all these things are important and the remaining one arctic circle tropic of capricorn uh, frigid zone temperate zone those things are also there so we are going to learn the next okay these these are some of the parallel latitudes okay now uh, this is a, a small example so when you see uh, in the globe the delhi coordinate is at 28.7 degree west and 77.1 degree east so the latitude is 28.7 degrees when you see delhi the location will be like latitude will be 28.7 degree and longitude will be 77.1 degrees okay so it will particularly when you see that this two point only where delhi will be there when you see okay this is like latitude and longitude of delhi okay so next thing we have to see is the grid of parallels of the latitude and meridian so the grid of the parallels of latitude and meridians of longitudes help us to locate any point on the globe so grid of parallels of latitude so latitude and meridians of the longitude okay grids of parallel of latitude and meridian of longitude helps in you can uh, when you have this you can identify any point on the globe the grid the particular grid um, if you can identify then you can just uh, point out the place right so now i will just ask you some question okay can you tell some place that have snow and also some place that doesn't have a snow? so can you give me some examples can you think of something yes kashmir do will have snow there okay uh, but uh, similarly uh, you give me some places of uh, which doesn't have snow right so we can say chennai mumbai and everything else. okay uh, the places which doesn't have snow we can say chennai mumbai those places right so there we don't have snow Okay. so we are going to see next is why we discuss that question is we are going to see about the heat zones of the earth okay so we have different heat zones of the earth okay so we have uh, three uh, zones here we have a torrid zone then temperate zone and frigid zone so what are the three uh, zones here torrid zone temperate zone and frigid zone torrid zone temperate zone and frigid zone so first we'll see what is uh, like torrid zone the area that receives the maximum heat is called the torrid zone so the area which gets the maximum heat is known as the torrid zone uh, it will be mostly near the equator okay so near the equator you will have more heat so the area that receives the maximum heat is called the torrid zone okay so next is temperate zone so we saw torrid zone now we are going to see temperate zone the area that have moderate temperatures are called temperate zone the areas that have moderate temperatures are called temperate zone the areas that have moderate temperatures are called temperate zone so the areas that have moderate temperatures are called the temperate zone okay moderate temperature you will get in temperate zone next is the frigid zone the sun's rays are always slanting and provide less heat in some regions so therefore it is called as the frigid zone that is it will be very cold that area will be very cold the sun's rays are always slanting and provides less heat in some regions therefore it is called as the 
frigid zone so we call it as a frigid zone so the three zones we saw now is torrid zone temperate zone and frigid zone so torrid zone temperate zone and frigid zone okay so here uh, sun's rays fall directly around the equator and therefore cause hot seasons throughout the year near the equator area as i said uh, near the equator you will have uh, it will be very hot right so because the sun's rays always falls directly to the equator so because of that those areas will have uh, heat throughout the year okay hot it will be very hot the sun's rays fall in slanting position near temperate zone and cause mild weather in these areas where summers are mild and winters are cold during summer also it will be very mild because it is in slanting position the sun's rays falls in slanting position so uh, the temperate zone will have a mild weather in these areas okay summer will also be mild and winter will be very cold here okay so we saw about temperate zone torrid zone and uh, frigid zone now uh, why it is very hot near the equator we saw and then uh, why temperate zone does it have that much uh, heat we'll just uh, explain here the next so we are going to see about day and night how we are getting day and night so the movement of earth on its own axis is called as a rotation is called as rotation the movement of earth on its own axis is called as rotation so earth takes 24 hours to complete one rotation so earth takes 24 hours to complete one rotation so the movement of earth on its own axis is called as rotation and earth takes 24 hours to complete one rotation now the sun rises in the east and sets in the west okay so when the sun is at uh, uh, directly above your head it is noon right so when earth rotates uh, from west to east okay only one part of the earth faces the sun so the part which faces the sun uh, gets the daylight and the part which doesn't face the sun gets the night okay so similarly when the earth rotates it takes like 24 hours no? so like that day and night changes okay based on this rotation of the earth the day and light night changes okay so next we are going to see about longitude and time so we have uh, something called as standard time like what do you uh, what do we have uh, sorry why do we have standard time okay we have a standard time which we all follow all over india okay why we have that so so as earth rotates each meridian has its own noon and its own day clock so this um, time also no for each place it might it will be different at different places okay as earth rotates each meridian has its own noon and its own day clock okay but we cannot follow like that uh, in different places different timing so we have this standard time a uniform time for places in approximately same longitude so which places are in uh, similar longitude they will have this uniform time they will follow this particular time for example uh, we have difference here in uh, gujarat we have uh, gujarat and assam itself within india there is a difference in time okay it is like uh, time difference of uh, 1 hour and 45 minutes so if it is 12 o'clock here in gujarat it will be 1:45 in assam so there is difference in timing within india itself so to avoid the confusion we are using this standard time so standard time is nothing but uniform time for places in approximately same longitudes 
okay which and all are in same longitude they will have this time so this is what uh, this also you can see in your textbooks this picture so you have the standard time so you have the line there so whichever places fall under that longitude they will follow the same timing okay so so next as i explained uh, the as the earth rotates the sun is directly overhead at one particular location this is the place where it is noon or 12 pm so when earth rotates the sun will be directly above our head no that is the 12 noon so the places east of this are having time beyond 12 pm and places before are having time before 12 pm so when uh, earth is uh, sorry when earth rotates the sun is up overhead no that is 12 pm on noon so the place to the east of this so when this line is drawn whichever place is in the east they will be having time beyond 12 pm that is it will be like 1 o'clock 2 o'clock like that and places before are having so which is before this uh, longitude no that will have uh, time before 12 pm that will be 11 10 like that okay so so this each location should have its own clock so then um, but for simplicity we have one standard noon time across because uh, each place will have different timing it will be difficult no so they are just following this standard um, time okay but for simplicity we have one standard noon time across so india although in india although the noons are of different places like delhi mumbai and kolkata are different hmm Uh, they are having some difference in timing there still okay so this is it uh, with this uh, i'm just completing this uh, lesson uh, worksheet is been given uh, just uh, finish up uh, go through the lesson so we'll see in the next class thank you children sairam